achieving sustainable progress into the future requires a true commitment to the well-being of our planet and its people. This responsibility goes beyond well-meaning words. At Densply Serona, it's in our DNA to give people healthy smiles. And we aim to impact all aspects that go with it. Countless local initiatives show that our people are eager and willing to contribute. We're ready to go beyond. Let's join forces and unleash our passion to make this place better than when we got here. We have the conviction we can drive meaningful actions for a healthy planet and stand up for equality and freedom while creating healthy smiles. Actions delivered with passion and integrity for a healthy business. Join us on this journey. Let's go beyond. Every three minutes, a baby is born with a cleft. These children are more likely to suffer cavities, tooth decay, and have missing or extra teeth, among other concerns. Now, children like Aaron can experience the benefits of digital intraoral scanning thanks to Densply Serona's Prime Scan donations. Removing a life-threatening choking hazard, more efficient for the treating doctor, and certainly much more comfortable for the little patients. For children like Aaron, one year ago, we started our five-year, $5 million partnership with SmileTrain, committed to advancing the future of cleft care globally. So far, over 60 cleft professionals registered to our clinical education courses. FisuLab, a SmileTrain partner in Bogota, Colombia, gained new equipment and together with SmileTrain and FDI World Dental Federation, we went even further, developing global standards for digital cleft treatment protocols. With our DS World 2021 participants and our employees, we made donations that funded life-changing cleft surgeries for over 730 children all around the world. That's a reason to celebrate on this one year anniversary. Thank you for being our partner in Smiles. Together, let's continue to go beyond. DSCore is our new digital platform that will provide a full set of solutions designed to work as your partner, offering efficiency, collaboration opportunities, and a 360 integration between practice and lab. With improved workflows, you and your team can now save time and focus even more on what matters the most, your patients. We listen to you. Now, let's work together. So, seven months, don't know how, four different dentists I reckon in total, with, with me, Nina, the guy who did the bonding, and you probably had one else, someone else that you saw. Yeah. From when we saw you, Luke, this is the moment where your smile is born.
seeing the patient through that journey and how they transform and and how happy it makes them. It really, I mean, for me, that it, it's made it so worthwhile and and it's kind of almost brought back the um, the love for what I do because it just you know warms your heart, doesn't it? It shows you what's possible, and once you know what's possible, that's the start of doing it. So if you never thought this was possible, you'll never try it. But now you know it's possible. Yeah. Maybe you can see a different side to how you can treat patients who present in your practice with teeth that are not aligned, with a missing tooth or two. This is a different way to treat them using technology that's available today. My name is Luke Wells, uh, I'm 36 years old and I am a executive assistant in digital marketing in London. Uh, before that I was working as a teacher in the performing arts and yeah, here we are. Yeah, I've had quite a journey with my teeth from a young age to be honest, um, when ever since the age of about 12 years old um, I was going to a dentist uh, and it just seemed that every time I was going to the dentist I'd always need some form of treatment. Um, as I've kind of got a little bit older and I found my dentist here at the Sanford, um, it turns out a lot of that treatment was quite unnecessary. So it's kind of left my teeth in uh, a little bit of a, all different states basically. Um, what that has done, it's given me a, like a awkward relationship with dentists in general. Um, it's a massive trust issue. Um, However, it's something that I do find so important that I just need to kind of get to a state now where I'm happy with my teeth. So for me, there's two reasons why I want to get my teeth done. The first is kind of medical. Um, I would like to have my teeth straight. I've had some bad experiences in the past where my crossbite has actually cracked a couple of teeth where I've needed an extraction, um, which I don't want to happen anymore. Um, so that's the medical reason. The second is the aesthetic reasons, as I mentioned, on looking at yourself constantly on a day-to-day -day basis on, on screen. You, you want to be happy and feel more confident in that. Hey, hi. Good to see Dr. Nina. Lovely. Please find it in your name. Yes, Luke Wells. Yeah, one of my friends I found. Yeah, third man I'm Nina Shafi and I'm a specialist orthodontist um, working at the Sanford, which is a private dental clinic. And we're a specialist centre where we get a lot of referrals and we treat, uh, well I personally treat mainly adults um, and also children. So Luke is an interesting case because he is quite a mild when, a case when you look at him. He's got a lovely smile already. So it's not just about improving the smile and the alignment of the teeth. It's actually about correcting the bite. And when you look inside Luke's mouth, you'll see that he has a cross bite. So the right side of his teeth aren't fitting together properly. And with that, when he bites together, he deviates his lower jaw to the right and with that you're getting a midline shift so problems long term with that is that you can get premature wear of teeth you can get issues with the jaw joints so it was from a health perspective very important to try and incorporate that correction into the treatment plan his upper left first premolar had a previous root filling and it broke down and this is what kind of instigated the whole journey of having orthodontic treatment because he now had a discolored broken down tooth and um, when we took a, an OPG uh, image, we noticed that he had a periapical infection associated with that tooth. So of course, this complicates the implant side of treatment. 
Now, we talked about different options of um, replacing this tooth, which was unrestorable, so we knew it had to go. We talked about the options of denture, but of course, Luke is young, he's you know fit and healthy, so having a denture at that age is not really a, um, a suitable option. Then we talked about bridges. Now, bridges, of course, you know, you're, we talked about the risk of preparation to other teeth and the downside. So we felt um, that after talking to Luke, that the best option would be a dental implant. When it came to actually planning his treatment, I needed to sort of look at the amount of movements I'm doing per aligner, where I'm putting the attachments, making sure that each aligner is going to be highly effective to give a very efficient treatment so we can then meet his timeline. And of course, where you're working alongside an implant surgeon or another clinician, it's important to collaborate closely because um, we need to allow enough time for the implant to go in, for the healing to happen. So all of these factors uh, you're able to, using the SureSmart platform, consider and plan accurately um, to make just the whole journey very, very smooth and efficient. Okay, so let's talk through your treatment plan. So basically, when I click start, it shows you incrementally what will happen to your teeth as you change each aligner. So this is liner number one. and you can see slowly, slowly, the teeth start lining up with each aligner. And you've actually got 23 aligners, um, slightly less on the upper, but you will still continue wearing the top and bottom, because even though the upper aligners finish after number 20, um, you'll have what we call passive aligners. So they'll still, you'll still be changing aligners, but they won't necessarily do anything. But the lower one has three extra aligners that are active and working. And I'll just show you the elastic. So um, this really goes, allows you to appreciate why the elastics are so important because if you don't wear elastics you see what happens if I zoom out there you see the midline is still off to the right yeah. and you still have that bite issue there so as soon as I click elastics you see what happens it shifts your lower jaw into yeah. the correct position with the top teeth so if you had purely um, orthodontic treatment without the elastics you'd have straight teeth but the bite won't be perfect by wearing the rubber bands you can manipulate and shift that bite into the right position and if I go on to this view here you can see what's happening so with each aligner that jaw shape starts widening out wow, yeah. and then the other thing as well with regards to this tooth because we talked about this last time and we don't want you to walk around with a gap so the plan is um, i'm going to liaise with martin he's going to take the tooth out and on the day when the tooth is removed you're going to have some painted uh, so the aligner will be painted in that area yeah. you just click it straight in so at no point are you walking around with a gap as long as you've got your amazing aligner. brilliant and then we allow the um, bone area to heal because there's a small infection up there. And then I then get to finish off my orthodontic treatment and we just refine the result. And then once the treatment with me is finished, you'll have your implant crown placed on top. So that's the tooth that goes on top to fill the space. And then you'll be done. Amazing. So, yeah, any so questions? 23 trays, yes. what time frame are we looking at for? So you'll be changing them roughly every 10 days. Okay. So, yeah, um, some stages, I, when I see you for your reviews, I might say to you, right, we could probably push it, because I know we've got um, your deadline to meet, so we could sort of push it to sometimes kind of eight days, but at the moment it will be every 10 days. And then we can also talk about any further cosmetic treatment you may want to do with ASIF, like composite bonding on the edges, but as I said, I will keep it as natural as possible and see how far we can get with the natural contour. And if we go to the start, you'll see the amount of overcrowding there, and slowly, slowly, that will, with each aligner, that slowly starts lining up there. Wow. And that's it. And these are the little buttons that you'll be using for your rubber bands. So yeah. Perfect. No worries. <laughs> I'm intrigued at the, uh, the strength of the aligner, uh, the, the timings of, of each aligner. I'm just so excited to get, to get going. Uh, it's always one of those things where you've always been apprehensive and it's quite overwhelming with the amount of options that are out there. Um, but since Nina's taken me through the Shore Smile experience, I just, I'm ready to go. I just want to get going now.
what what sort of drew me really to Sure Smile is that it's not just an aligner platform. It's a, a digital orthodontic platform when you can plan fixed appliances, you can uh, plan aligners, uh, you know, even advanced things like joint uh, orthognathic um, treatments. So it is really a fully comprehensive platform that sort of caters for, it's all in one really. So, um, and the amazing thing about Sure Smile is that really, as a clinician, it gives me full control, and that's what the previous aligner systems lacked. And I felt that, you know, the result that perhaps the software produ produces really doesn't translate into real life movements, whereas this is much, much more accurate. And if you understand the software, if you understand how tooth movements move with uh, aligners, you can actually, for example, as I said earlier, you can do over corrections. You know that, okay, for example, extrusive movements are very difficult. So you have the option to um, change your aligner trim height to make it much um, higher, which will make in turn the movements more effective and more um, efficient. So you then know that your extrusive movements will translate much better into real life. And if you have rotations, again, the system allows you to overcorrect. But for me, for example, I might prefer instead of doing the bog standard 20% that the system does, you can go in and edit it and do, you know, 35% overcorrection. So really, the system itself is very versatile. And I think, and that's the key, it's, it's compared to fixed braces, it's removing those inefficiencies and making it as accurate as possible and as predictable as possible. And I think that's really key. Um, to, to Sure Smile as a clear aligner system. Now, you'll see in a second how I've actually uh, cut the attachment template because what you don't want to do is do all your attachments in one piece. You want to cut your template into a few different pieces, which you can see here if I lift that up. So on the upper, we know the upper right quadrant is two attachments, so I've cut that into a separate piece and the left side another piece. Because if you're doing all of them in one go, what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of flexibility in the tray, in the template tray, and then your attachments will not be in the most accurate position, and then that's going to in turn affect the fit of your aligner. So, first step is we're going to begin with a little bit of edge. And we apply that to the tooth for 30 seconds. And then we're going to wash that off in a bit. And it's always useful to look onto the actual treatment plan to see where are the attachments going because if the attachment is not going to be um, if it's slightly off center then you don't really want to etch the whole surface of a tooth so really just kind of etching within the area where the attachment is going and then we'll wash off with a little bit of air and water okay and then we're going to light cure that and it makes it so much easier to actually preload your composite because now once we've done the light cure of the bond, we're then ready to go to grab the attachments um, from the template and then place them on the teeth. So we've got the attachments in the preloaded with hybrid composite. And then we line them up. Very important to uh, actually turn the light off at this stage, not to cure the composite. And then very, very important to make sure that is fully in place. So we attach some, uh, we place some pressure occlusally. And then with your finger and another instrument, make sure that you are ensuring the template is fully seated down before curing. And when you like cure, also important not to actually place the tip of the like cure onto the plastic because it could heat it up and then um, sort of melt it slightly. So we're going to hold this just a millimetre away and then your system will cure that. And very, very important to when you're loading the attachments or your composite into the attachment slots on your template that you are ensuring it's packed into the full slot because you want to get the right shape so the beveled edges need to be um, very distinct and your flat edge of your attachment again needs to be quite uh, distinct. So we can see really nice attachments there. Um, we've got a lovely 
beveled edge and we've got the flat edge there but we do also have quite a bit of excess so we need to just go over that because otherwise your aligners when you pop them in they won't fully seat and if they don't fully seat that means it's not gonna uh, work as efficiently So I normally like to use a dense by Serona space file system. So you start off with your um, smaller ones and move up and uh, there is a little sheet separately that tells you exactly what color and what size each corresponds to. But we've written it here just for um, ease of use. So we know we're doing 0.4, which is our black course, uh, just under the black course, so between the green and the black. So we're gonna start off with uh, I've already broken the contact area with this strip, so we're going to start straight with the purple, then we're going to go on to white, yellow, and then red. Okay, and then we're going to finish off with a medium and a coarse, which is our blue and green. So it helps putting them in order. So we go on to our second one. You can attach these two hand pieces as well, um, which makes the process a lot faster. Because we haven't got much IPR that we're doing today, I'm doing it all manually. Yeah, and you've got a beautiful amount of IPR, and it's very, very precise. So very very important to get your attachments as perfect as possible get your ipr really accurate and a lot of clinicians tend to uh, under do the ipr so very important that you get the correct amount otherwise your teeth and your treatment is not going to track well so we've done all our ipr we've done placement of the attachments as you can see they are very well defined so actually it's going to engage really nicely with the aligners now the next thing we need to do is place our composite buttons for the rubber bands that Luke will be wearing. I don't like using preformed metal ones or even composite buttons because I find they come off quite easily, especially if the, um, the shape of the anatomy of the molars are very different in each case. So we're going to make it by hand and we're going to start with the lower right. So you always want to check where your cutout is and in this case it's in the middle of the tooth. And then we're going to use a flowable composite that's going to mold over these orthodontic separators, which is going to be the template for our handmade buttons. Thank you. All right, next, we're going to add the orthodontic separator on the tooth like so and then we get our composite flow and we inject into the middle of the loop and then flow it over the borders and then I just position it in the correct area and then we are going to cure that we're going to remove the orthodontic separator by nudging it off and we've actually pre-cut into that loop so so okay and then we cure that one more time for another 10 seconds and I'll just add one elastic and then I can demonstrate how that works. Thank you. Attach it from there to there. So that's where our elastics are gonna go. So you've got a nice sturdy little composite handmade button. So the difference between the upper and lower is the top has yeah. got bigger teeth, so you know which is which. And what you do is you, we'll start with the lower, you'll line them up across the teeth like this. Okay, so, and then the other way to kind of know where they go is each of these little reservoirs fits into the attachments that you've got. So okay. you line them up and then you apply a bit of pressure and the first noise you're going to hear is a loud click as it seats in. Okay, uh -huh. so it should feel really, really quite tight and snug. Yeah. Now, 
the difficulty is taking them in and out. So in a second, we're going to practice that as well. Now on the top, it's the same. Now with Luke's specific case, I've actually made the trim height quite low because he's got a couple of crowns and heavily restored teeth. So you don't really want to apply a lot of pressure to them. So I have customized the aligners to his specific needs. And again, we line this up. And again, there's a little reservoir there and there's an attachment. And again, there's an attachment there. So once you've lined it up, hands on, the fingers on both sides and you just ease it in and you should hear a little bit of a click. Yeah. yeah. So they fit beautifully. Now, a couple of things we need to check is to make sure that the attachments are sitting in those welds. We need to check the position of the buttons because if the button is interfering with the um, side of the aligner, as the patient takes it in and out, it's going to pop off. And again, we're checking all the attachments there and making sure there's no space there. Sometimes you pop the aligner in and you have a little bit of spacing between the aligner and the tooth. And that's because not all the excess bond and composites has been removed. So you've got a little notch on your aligner there. Okay, mm -hmm. so you attach it to there and then you bring it over to that little mushroom hook. There we are. Wow. And yeah, perfect. So you close together, put on. Fantastic. Yeah. What type of movement are you feeling in the jaw? It's like a, yeah. a sideways pull. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how it works, is pulling your lower um, jaw to the left to make a slot in. So any questions at all? No. Yeah, it's been a long day, but I'm you did amazingly. You survived through it all. So it's the morning after I had my aligners fitted and one of my biggest concerns was how I was going to sleep, but I can honestly say I've never slept better. So this morning, woke up, aligners out, had my breakfast and a cup of coffee, cleaned my teeth, cleaned the aligners, got them straight back in, no problem at all. My name is Dr. Martin Monende. I'm a general dentist with a special interest in implants and my practice is limited to implantology. The practice I work at, me and my partner Nick Sosodi is called Ten Dental and we're based in Clapham in London. Luke came to me partway through his uh, short smile treatment with Dr. Nina Shafi. Uh, he was looking to replace his upper left for his upper, you know, his upper left first premolar. It had fractured during lockdown, as with many other people. He'd had it rebuilt a few times. It was really affected his confidence because Luke is the sort of guy who I think he looks after himself. And what was missing is, you know, that, that tooth did not look great. So really what he was looking for, he was looking for an aesthetic solution, a long-term solution and a fixed solution. And really this is where a dental implant is going to provide that for him. So in Luke's case, when he first came in, what we did was we did a, an intraoral scan with the Prime Scan, which gave us a highly accurate scan that we were able to use to make a surgical guide. We also took a CBCT scan of his jaw and we were able to then see all of the contours and shape of his bone and also the, you know, also the, the area of bone that we're going to be using to anchor the implant. What was really interesting with this technology is by looking at this, even though his case on a 2D PA or OPG looks undoable, but with the 3D technology and also with the fact we're going to be using a prime taper implant, where the end of the prime taper implant allows us to really anchor in the remaining bone, this will give us the opportunity to place the implant immediately. I'll be using a surgical guide so that I can place the implant in exactly the correct position so that when every, all the teeth are in line, we can ensure that this tooth fits in with the lovely work that Nina's going to be doing. Mm -hmm. 
So today what we'll be doing is we'll be putting a temporary custom made abutment into the area and then also just giving him something so he has the appearance of a tooth on his short smile aligner. He'll then carry on, have the rest of his teeth straightened and then at the end he'll come back to me for me to put a temporary and then a permanent crown onto this implant. So what do you know about implants? Not too much, not too much. Obviously everyone does the internet research and, and things like that and it sounds from what I gather, it sounds worse than what it is. Um, there is a little bit of anxiety there, but I've been reassured that it's going to be absolutely fine. Okay. Do you know what are the advantages of dental implants in your situation? Um, for me, it's the aesthetic. That's going to be my main advantage um, due to the location of the tooth that needs the implant. Um, it would need to be extracted. Um, so for me to have an implant in place rather than a missing tooth is, is really important. So I'm excited to see the outcome. I'm like really excited. So what you can see here is I am first of all just putting a very tiny luxator into the periodontal ligament and once I've put that luxator into the periodontal ligament and I've broken the fibers in and around that periodontal ligament I'm then going to proceed to start to extract the tooth. There's a couple of different tools that I've used. The first tool I've tried to use is a luxator just to basically get the tooth moving a little bit more. Now once the tooth is moving a little bit more I've got a set of fine tipped root forceps that I'm now putting uh, on the root in order to extract the tooth. Please note that one of the things that's important here is I'm supporting the buckle plate because in order to be able to place this implant immediately, one of the things that I want, one of the key things is to really, really maintain and keep that buckle bone. So as I'm working, I'm just supporting the buckle plate with a finger or a thumb or with a finger as it is here in order to ensure that I don't put too much pressure on it and it doesn't break. So although you see a lot of movement, what I'm using is an atraumatic and gentle technique. I reach the point where once I can feel the tooth or the root moving and I can feel which way it wants to go, I then gently extract that while trying to keep as many of the structures around there intact. As I've taken the tooth out, you can see I've got a little bit of soft tissue on the distal part. I'm not too worried about that uh, as it is, but the main thing is I've got the root out intact. I haven't damaged the buckle plate, which means that we are all go in order to remove the in order to place the implant. What I'm doing here is just once the tooth is out, I'm really just double checking that that buckle plate is intact. You can see me using a probe here to check the height of the buckle plate and just ensuring that it's intact at a level that allows me to actually, first of all, place the implant and also secondly, is gonna maintain the bone in that area. So once I've, extract, once I've extracted the tooth, once I've checked to see that the buccal plate is intact, the next part really is to get to that periapical area that we've seen. Now, you know on the CT scan that we've shown, there's an area above the periapical area where I can anchor the prime taper implant. But the key thing for me here is to make sure that I remove it, all of this area of chronic infection. So I'm using here just a very small fine tipped instrument. And you can see I've managed to get all of that area of chronic infection out in one go so you see that coming out there so once that's out um, what I can do then is just clean and irrigate the socket with some saline I sometimes use a degranulation burr in the socket and then once that's all done I'm pretty sure that what I've got is I've got an intact socket I've got obviously an area or just near the buck you know apically and buckley where that infection was but that's not really where I'm going to anchor the implant. I'm going to anchor it into the palatal wall. And in order to get it into the place that I've planned, this is a surgical guide that I've had made. Now, I've made this surgical guide in a slightly different way to normal today in terms of what I've done is I've planned the case on Simplant, then I've downloaded the surgical guide file. I've sent this off to the laboratory. And what they've done is they've printed the guide and they've inserted the guide sleeve at the correct depth. You can see me placing the guide onto the teeth and just checking that there's no movement on the guide before beginning and going through the guided surgery sequence. 
Uh, with the prime taper guided drills, what I'm doing is going through the sequence, which involves first of all using drill number one and putting this to depth. So you can see me here just ensuring that that implant goes, that drill goes all the way to depth. And I'll use it, it's a sleeve on guide system, meaning that the sleeve fits into the guide. And once the sleeve is on the guide, that's the time when I actually begin to introduce the drill into the osteotomy. When the drill is there, we go all the way until we actually hit the stopper. And at the stopper, we're at the correct drill. Well, I'm then using the next drill in this sequence. The next drill here is drill number three on the Prime Taper Guided Kit. And again, you can see me using the sleeve and using the sleeve and inserting that into, using, using the sleeve on drill and inserting that sleeve into the sleeve on the guide before beginning the drill process. But ensuring that all the time that I'm using it, that I've got the drill engaged into the sleeve for the entire time that I am actually pushing the drill down in order to get the most accuracy from this. You'll see me guiding it all the way to the base and making sure that I reach the point where once I where the drill hits the stopper on the end and that means that I'm at the correct depth. The next thing I need to do is I need to address that area um, on the apico buckle part, part of where the root was and here you can see me using Ossix bone introducing this into the socket once it's introduced into the socket, I check that this hydrates with blood, so you'll see this turning red. And once it's hydrated with blood, I'm then pushing it into the correct position where I want it to A, fill a space and also provide a scaffold so we get bone in that area. What you can see me doing now is introducing the prime taper implant. This is a 3.6 implant that I'm putting in. And as I'm placing it, please just note there's a line that you can see or a groove or a notch on the buckle part of the guide. You'll also see on the actual driver that there's six different points. And what I need to make sure I do is I line up one of those, one of those notches on the drill with the, uh, with, with the notch on the guide. And as we're placing, you'll see me going in, getting again, excellent primary stability from that. And again, you've seen the situation that we faced. And I've reached the point where once everything's lined up and I've got the implant in place, you'll see here the driver in the correct place. So once I've done that and the implant's in place and I'm sure I've got excellent primary stability, what I'm going to do now is basically cover the area where the socket is because we've got a round implant in a larger oval hole and where the, the, the implant's in place, I've got something called a jumping gap. That I'm going to fill with a little bit of Ossix bone, but more importantly, I'm going to seal this with a customized impression post. The customized impression post is made, made by using a component called the custom base EV. This is inserted into the implant and once I've done that, I then reline it with, I then build up the shape of what I need with some of the, uh, with some composite. And once the flowable composite has been molded into the right shape to support the soft tissues, to occlude the socket and stop food and uh, stop food and other, and other things getting into the socket, as well as obviously, you know, maintain the shape of the socket. I fill the final bits with the Ossix bone before then actually placing the customized impression post that you see there. And again, one of the benefits of using guided surgery here, you'll see although I've placed the implant palatally, what I've been able to do is to line it up so that I get the I get the implant coming through the middle of the of the proposed tooth space so that when this comes to restoration, this will make this a screw retained crown and also hopefully a little bit more aesthetic as well as a little bit more cleansable. Thank you. I think that went really well. What was very nice is we managed to get the tooth out intact and the buckle plate was intact as well. And the next thing that happened is there was an area of infection, so a chronic, uh, a chronic granulomerous area. And we managed to clean that area out and get that out very clean. We we're able then to insert some Ossix, uh, some Ossix bone into the area, obviously having used the guide and made the drill. The knee implant went in and a really, really good talk. And also we got that into the correct position. The healing abutment looks good. So really in terms of how things are gonna work, 
what I hope is that in about you know eight to, between eight and ten weeks we'll be ready for the next stage of treatment or at least after the orthodontic treatment. I mean, the other thing that we have to really, you know, say thank you to and put our hands up to is for Luke, who did fantastically as the patient during that. He was particularly nervous. He mentioned that he's been putting this off for a while. He mentioned his last extraction was particularly difficult. So what's quite nice is actually for him to have a really nice dental experience. So hopefully in the future, he won't put treatment off like this when he knows that actually he can get it done painlessly, get it done quickly. And also we can use modern tools and technology such as guided surgery to make the procedure much much easier for him. So what will be your next step? The next step is I'm going to wait for all the soft tissue to heal and for the implant to integrate and then I'm hoping once uh, Nina has finished moving the teeth around and once I have a final tooth position that's when we'll, we'll be able to take an impression. We might make a provisional crown or we might go to a final crown depending on what stage Luke is at there. Honestly I've been putting that off for eight years and I just cannot believe I didn't do it sooner. Like no pain, I, d I didn't even feel anything. So, yeah, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> what would you recommend to other people that are considering implants? implants? Just go for it. 100% just go for it. It's not as scary as what everyone thinks. And it's, it's over just like that. So definitely get it done. I have four weeks left of my short smile journey and I couldn't be happy with the results so far. As you can see, everything is becoming a lot straighter. And what we are doing now, Nina has actually incorporated a few more buttons with a few more elastic bands around certain teeth just to help with the fine tuning. So we have one here and that is a rubber band that's actually gonna help pull the tooth down from the jawbone. And I have an extra four around here. So Here's how I put them all on. Elastics also the last 48 hours, I think, have been quite intense. Yeah, um, pretty straightforward to be yeah. fair. Again, it's just like learning the different kind of mechanics of where they sit, but other than that, it's been absolutely fine. I have to say, you've done amazing with those. We were just talking about how we couldn't have found a better patient with all the elastics in the directions. But um, you sent me a message as well, didn't you, the yeah. other day, because there was one tooth that wasn't quite um, up in time. Yes. And then I sort of explained what to do. In fact, um, I said, so to put that chain underneath, didn't I? You did, yeah. And then uh, you managed to do that. And then how, how long did it take before it took effect? So I, it took a matter of two hours. Like fully, um, yeah. I, I, Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. We just literally switch, switched back to the previous band we were on on that singular two, and within two hours it just popped straight back up. Amazing. So. Well, let's see how it actually looks today. I'm very excited. <laughs> it's been an intense last two days. Actually, last couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> I like the sound effects. <laughs> Enjoy your perfect smile. It's like it has a little countdown. So it's no like one, one day to a perfect smile. Wow. So we've had to do quite a bit of orthodontic engineering here to get all of this ready in time. So we've got some anterior cross elastics. We've got some settling elastics, uh, triangular ones on the sides there to try and bring the occlusion tighter together. 
and then we've also got this little amazing elastic which is our really tight wolf elastic that's going from the button on the buckle side to the lingual aspect and that was just used to really extrude that tooth so because we recently closed the gaps in the front there um, in time for today I'm actually going to fit the bonded retainer with those still attached to make sure that it's keeping the teeth as tight together as possible and then we're going to fit a bonded retainer and that's going to be trimmed to the exact size and we're going to um, bond it on passively which is how I always do my retainers for fixed braces or clear aligners. Okay so everything looks really good but we still have a tiny little gap so look I'm just going to remove this power chain and what I'm going to do is put a fresh one on. We're going to leave it five minutes and that will just close that tiny slither of a space, which is just a quarter of a millimeter. And what we can always do is refine should we need to later. What I want to do is because Martin's going to be doing your um, implant um, and we've got a date for that uh, implant impression. Um, I think you said next week? Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. yeah. So he's going to do your implant impression. Now, we don't want anything to move in terms of the front teeth and the bite. So I'm actually going to put a fixed retainer behind those lower teeth. And then if we need to, um, we can then continue with the refinement, definitely of the upper, which we need to, to sort of tighten the bite a little bit on the back and also expand the upper right six, which is still has a little bit of a cross bite tendency. But um, bearing in mind that we've only had, as we said, seven months, <laughs> it's uh, actually we've achieved so much in that short time frame that we've had okay so as we can see the gap fully closed we've got the buttons on so we have six buttons which we need to remove and the chain so we're going to start off by removing that power chain so a little bit of pressure then now we're going to remove the uh, buttons off with the uh, fast the bomber and then we're going to go on with the slow when we get closer to the enamel okay so we're going to remove all the uh, attachments and the buttons we've got some on the inside and we've also got some on the um, outside so let's begin with the lower Right, so that's all done. All your attachments, all your thousand buttons are off. And sad yeah, how does it feel? <laughs> Very sad day. Yeah, amazing. Good. So the next thing we're gonna do is the composite bonding on the um, side teeth here, which are quite small. And you said you sort of wanted that, um, you know, quite, what was the words you described like it? More a linear line. Yeah. So he's talking about more the kind of like perfect ideal proportions so um yeah so that's what we're going to do next and then we'll see how it looks on the side we may add a little bit on the edges of the front and you also wanted your canines less pointy once we've built up the front and the side you might not actually want the canines done but we'll see we might yeah. be able to just soften it up with a little bit of the shaping um if you still want it a bit rounder then we can just always add a little bit of composite um, resin to the edges of those mm -hmm. Okay, right, let's sit you good. up. You can have a little rinse. So um, he's currently in with the dentist having his uh, composite bonding done. So just to finish off the cosmetic sort of look of the front teeth, because even though they are aligned, Luke doesn't like the fact that they um, are just the shape isn't quite right. Also his lateral incisors, they're very small and narrow. So the dentist is currently lengthening them. And I'm gonna go in and apply my little artistic finishing touches to just perfect it. Um, and at the moment we're using Dentsply Serona's latest composite technology, which is um, Spectra. And it's got this sort of chameleon effect filler in it, where, you know, whether you're A1, B1 or C1, it just blends in beautifully. And I just popped in actually to see how the dentist is finding it, because it's the first time he's using it. And he just went, ah, oh, beautiful. So, <laughs> you know, um, really, really pleased with it. Hey. Are you excited? I'm nervous. I'm all the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so obviously still got some work left. Teeth are a little bit dehydrated, but um, just remember it's going to sort of rehydrate and look normal in a couple of hours. 
Are we ready? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So turn that around, have a go, look. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 what do we think? Oh my god! Is it that straight edge that you wanted that you were talking about? It's better. Yeah. Oh. Yay. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You've been such a thank good you. patient. Ah. Oh. <laughs> 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 You've been so patient with us. Oh. Oh, Honestly, you've been a star. Really. You're gonna make yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> they're amazing. Oh. I'm glad you're happy. Oh my god. <laughs> I never thought I'd have nice teeth like that. Ever. <laughs> Once the implant is done and we refine everything, it's just going to, you're going to have the best teeth out of all your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. They look so natural. Yeah, yeah. They look amazing. Oh. Well done. Well, well done, team, well everyone. Done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> and it, let's remind you of the start. <laughs> yeah, I need to see the start. Like. So that was the, let me see. So we had this issue with the crossbite. So actually, that was the most difficult thing. Aesthetically, they weren't that bad because they were, you know, yes, a few minor discrepancies, but you had a good established crossbite there top jaw very narrow lower off um, sticking out a little bit but the issue was because of that discrepancy your lower jaw was sliding off so when you look at the midline way off to that side mm. but now every time you bite when you consciously make an effort to bite it lands in the middle so yeah and you had a deep bite now it's improved so yeah good. it's insane <laughs> Well, Luke actually got a little reminder on his app this morning to say we're celebrating our uh, seven month braces anniversary, <laughs> which was funny. But it has really been an intense last couple of months um, because we've had this sort of deadline to to meet. And with, with teeth, you know, as I was saying earlier, it's one of those things they never do what you want. They're a bit like teenagers, you know, they'll usually do the opposite. So to work with a specific time frame whilst you're trying to correct the bite, you know, the alignment, it can be quite tricky. But um, with Shorts Must being quite versatile because we've been able to kind of adapt our plan just like you would with fixed braces, change things, you know, just to speed it up and get things ready for today. So um, when Luke arrived this morning, he still had a tiny little sliver, a quarter of a millimeter gap, and um, we managed to close it before fitting the bond the retainer, which of course then holds it together. So, um, but again, you have to kind of think outside the box and involves a little bit of orthodontic engineering to do that. And um, the other thing as well is uh, Luke is going to see Martin in uh, next week to have his impressions or digital impressions done for his uh, implant crown. And the difficulty we're having in this case is his bite's still not quite finished, so I still need to refine him further. But it doesn't affect what Martin's doing because the left side is completely finished and the bite is correct, so he can get on with what he's doing. And then when he's had his crown fitted for the implant, then I will see Luke to basically just um, finish everything off and perfect that bite because the right side's still not quite together. But you know, considering we've only had seven months, what we've achieved is really, really quite significant. So, so. Considering the time frame, I'm actually very, very pleased with his results, and he's over the moon, so. And, and how do you feel now? Like, what, what was the big smile reveal like? It, it was emotional. I didn't think it was going to get me. I was really nervous, really nervous, but I think just kind of seeing the, well, the nearly end product, it was just something that I never thought I could have. So to see it actually on my face was, Incredible. They're mine, they belong to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> they are mine. <laughs>
in the world of implant dentistry, you know, collaboration between dentists and technicians is a key part of being able to get really, really good results. Being able to have a laboratory that you can communicate with so that they understand what it is you want in terms of how you want your crowns made, your bridges made, your overdenture bars made, all of that stuff is really, really key because having digital te technology that means that once they look at that and they're able to see it, they're then able to show you what it is they've planned. And we all know that saying something and having a picture are two very different ways of communicating. You get much more detail in a picture. And the technology between us that allows us him to show me what he's planned, me to agree or disagree. And that level of, have, of, of communication is really, really important because without a good lab, I think really we cannot achieve the results that we do in digital dentistry. And, as, and especially in this case for Luke, being able to give him a tooth that we know is gonna look good and last a long time and also has been designed specifically for him by the technician, not something that's got off the shelf, not something that's just been picked up, but everything about that design has been gone through by Steve and his team. I started as an analog technician, okay? So it used to be really long and laborious. Uh, so from taking a case in to working it all the way through, there was many, many manual steps. That's all transformed now with a digital workflow. We get a notification that the scan's coming in. We get the prescription that's there digitally. We bring all that information straight into our CAD system. We build a model. Of course, we don't have to. Atlantis could do that for us if you don't have your own printer. We send the files up to Atlantis, and within an hour, I'm on a 3D editor editing the abutment. I approve the abutment, then about six hours later, maybe a full day, in like if they're really, really busy, I get the core file back. I design the crown. And as we've seen, those two elements come from completely different places, Moldau in Sweden and Harrogate, because uh, we use a different milling partner there for our, our zirconia, and they fit perfectly. Every time, every single time. We, we don't even have to wait for the abutments to come back anymore. Our faith is complete in it. So that workflow is all happening in minute segments. I think it probably takes me from the very beginning of actual working time to the end on Atlantis abutments. I think it probably takes me, including the crown, 20 minutes maximum. That the, the longest time we've seen spent in the process is obviously spent by our ceramic and detailing team because they have to make it look you know, highly aesthetic, blending with the teeth. So really, if I look at that as an efficiency point of view, I know I'm not gonna be able to get technicians easily in the future, but if I can do eight times as many abutments in a day as I could in the old workflow, I've found eight more members of the team, essentially. And that's gonna be the key, really. That's gonna be the key, not for success, for survival. This is the key for the industry. We've got to understand this. People, I think, look at Atlantis as like, oh, it'd be a nice to have. It's like, no, it's a must have. We are working as a team, a surgical and laboratory team. With these tools we have now, we work even closer. You know, Martin's in London and we're here in Ripon in North Yorkshire, but we work side by side because you've seen digital allows us to communicate and work very effectively. It's as if we were working next door to each other. And I think that's, that's just incredible. And this is it, it's ready to go back. So from this point, it'll be back to Martin, over to him to fit.
Luke's coming through, have a seat. So what I'm doing now is Luke's coming in for the final fit and I have to, first and foremost, just take off that little bit of composite that was on the top of the two. So what I'm going to do now is to undo the customized healing abutment. So this is on hand tight. You'll see I'll just undo it and then hoping little wiggle that this comes off. Okay, that's the customized healing abutment. And what we're going to replace it with now, this is the crown on the model. This has arrived from Steve, the laboratory, hand delivered. I'm going to take that off the model. So this is the custom Atlantis abutment. This has been made digitally by Steve and his team. You can see the part there where we've got the gold hue, that's titanium. Then there's obviously a zirconia core. We can also see that there's some very nice layering being done on the surface by Hugo at Nexus Dental. So we've got a lovely crown here that we're going to pop in to Luke's mouth. Now because of the way this connection works on this implant, what we're able to do, it's got a one position only connection. The reason why that's important is as we put it in, that goes into just the one position and slots in. The mirror. So what I've done is I've just put, I've essentially just inserted the, imp the implant crown in. Having a look, that's a really nice shade. I uh, really like the shape of that. Uh, that really just blends in. You saw how when that went in, there's actually zero pressure on the tissue. That's partly as a result of Steve and his team doing a fantastic job on the emergence profile. What I'm doing now is I'm just doing the final talking of the crown. This is a torque wrench that I've got. I'm just going to put it to 25 Newton centimeters just to check for an adequate torque. So the next part to check is the contacts. So the contacts are the areas between the crown and the neighboring teeth to make sure that's perfect. Perfect. That sound there means we won't get food caught in between those areas. And we won't get any further movement of the teeth. So the crown's in. We've checked the contact areas and that looks nice. Luke, before we finish everything off, we're very happy, but we need to know what you think of it. So, seven months, don't know how, four different dentists I reckon in total, yeah. with, with me, Nina, the guy who did the bonding, and you probably yeah. had one else at someone else that you saw. Yeah. And when we saw you, Luke, this is the moment where your smile is born. Oh <laughs> my God. They've done a phenomenal job at the lab for you there, on the side. That, that, it looks so real. Yeah. And when you came with the stump, the kind of broken, horrible stump to, to this. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank oh. you so, so much. It's incredible. Oh. It's incredible. I can't believe they're my teeth. I they are teeth. just, oh, I mean, you wouldn't know. They just look like a row of perfect teeth, everything replaced. I mean, the, the straightening, the bonding, that all looks phenomenal. The work from the lab, the fact that, you know, that is. It's great, really great. And also there's the bite, the fact that you'll be able to bite and chew with this as normal and treat it exactly yes. as normal. I 
<laughs> we should leave you with the mirror for a few moments. Oh. Oh. I thought today went really, really well. What worked very well was having the, the, such a nice crown back from the lab at short notice because I know people working really hard both at Nexus Dental Lab, that would be Hugo and Steve, and also the team at Atlantis to get that crown back to them, to get it back to me in record time. I'm really pleased that two things, one is we got the work done on time, the second is we had a really, really lovely looking crown that you're going to see in the photographs that we've taken of Luke. So really pleased with the overall appearance and fit, you know, when it went down it just, just it slid in first time. So I'm really, really pleased with how that's gone. The implant's in, it's solid, we've checked that that's integrated, Luke can bite on it, the soft tissue looks fantastic, the crown looks great, so all of those things are good. One of the things that was really good was having an implant where we've got an apical part of the implant where you can get really, really good primary stability. Having the cutting threads there on the prime taper implant meant that when I first assessed Luke's case and I saw the periapical area, I looked at that and thought we're never going to be able to get an implant in there. But by being able to bypass that area and engage the bone apical to the, to the area of infection along the, on the apex of the tooth, we were able to actually get an implant in, get very good primary stability, make a customised impression post all on the same day. So from my perspective, I'm really pleased at having an implant that allowed us to do that. And that's where the prime taper came in. <laughs> so. Luke, we are. Explain to us what we what, what you've been doing today. Um, so today was my final visit, visit to the uh, wonderful Dr. Martin, and he fitted my crown for my implant. How long have you been putting this off, and what do you what do you now think? So in in total, um, it's been an eight nine year journey of anxiety and fear and the unknown and just constant putting off. Um, so the fact that this entire thing has been completed in seven months is completely mind-blowing. I just can't believe it's, I've not done it sooner. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's completely surpassed anything I thought could ever happen. I thought, oh yeah, you know, braces, you know, straight teeth, you know, get an implant put on and it, 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 will, it will just look better than it was. But the fact that it's looking like this now, <laughs> it, it's just incredible. The fact that I can walk around now and just feel completely confident with my smile is it's life changing. <laughs> I know, this is where I'm my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So there were definitely some major challenges uh, which I was able to overcome, but it involved a lot of um, thinking, you know, engineering, um, combining it with art and science. Considering the time constraint, um, the main aim was to be able to get him to a point where he was ready to have his implant treatment. And that was key, but of, of course, aesthetically make him, um, you know, presentable so that he could have his composite bonding. Now, um, there is some element of settling of the bite that needs to happen. Um, um, he's not quite finished yet, but that's what the refinements are for. So we've actually booked Luke, to, uh, Luke in to have his um, orthodontic scan done. And then we're going to make some refinement aligners, which will then basically perfect the result, finish off the bite. So he's not quite finished, but I think considering we had seven months, um, you know, dreams do come true. So. <laughs> and I, I have to, to add to that, Nina, you know, there was a moment where 
you know, I saw Luke at the beginning of his treatment and I saw that you were the, the crossbite, the side yes. with the crossbite. I looked at that and I thought, how are you going to do that in that time? I really did think, how are you going to do that with aligners? Yeah. And when he came in for his impression, you know, when, we, when I started my part of the restorative, I had look, and I was amazed at what you had achieved in that period of time you. with <laughs> your elastics, with, you know, with, with aligners and with the compliant patient. I really, really did not know that you could do a, that amount of treatment and also that fast with alignment so really I was hugely impressed by that bit Thank of what you, you did. I mean we were very lucky in that um, you know the patient obviously Luke mm. you know if it was another patient we may not have been able to achieve the same result in such mm. a short time span mm. but you know when I said we're so many X number of elastics he did and he was very compliant and I was able to sort of almost remotely kind of um, mm. monitor his situation he'd send me regular weekly pictures mm. and then I said okay let's swap the elastics this way around mm. so you know, he was a, I have to say, a fantastic patient. And um, if it was something for someone else, we probably wouldn't have been able to do it that quickly. And it's always nice when you've got someone to work on where they're that compliant and they're doing everything oh, you want. Because he would come in and, and he would take the elastics out <laughs> yeah. just before the implant treatment yeah. and then say, when can I wear the elastics? So he was acutely aware of the time scale yeah. as well. And he really, really did work with you to do that part of the treatment. Yeah. I mean, a good elastic wearer is an orthodontist's dream, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> If this was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, this would not have been achievable because technology, especially, you know, in orthodontics has moved a long way. I mean, just the ability to be able to scan someone now and of course, Shoresmell is a fully digital platform, but the ability to be able to scan someone and, you know, submit it in such a short time, get the planning done. And of course, it's shipped back, uh, you know, across continents in within a span of, you know, sometimes two weeks. So two, three weeks. So really, that has moved a long way. From Luke's case, it, I think the challenge really, the challenging um, case that he had, it really pushed me uh, to kind of think outside the box and think, well, okay, if you have a case where a patient, let's say, is getting married or they've got an important life event where you have to get the, you know, meet the deadline, you, you can't always, you have to think outside the box. And with Luke, it was so, uh, it's so amazing that he was compliant. So, you know, one day he came in and I realised, well, actually, we've only got two months left till Luke sees Martin. And I, this tooth hasn't fully moved uh, as I wanted to for a number of different reasons. Um, and, you know, you have to consider the patient obviously has a life to live as well. They will have events that they can't wear it 22 hours a day for. So you have to add in that, okay, that will add on a few extra days to the aligner treatment. To summarise it, really, it was, I wish I had more time. But um, as I said, I couldn't have had a better patient. So considering how much we had, you know, what we've achieved is really far and beyond what I had hoped for. And overall, uh, and the main thing really is, is, is the patient at the center of all of, of, of this project, really. And um, to see Luke transform and the change in his confidence, the way he smiles, you know, when you see him, he just, you know, it just brightens uh, the room when he enters the room. So I think for me, that is what, I, what I've loved about this journey and just seeing his transformation. First thing I looked at, I thought we're really, really going to struggle here because I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. And I remember having this, this moment where I said, you've got a brilliant patient, but I'm not sure I can deliver on my side because he's got potentially a, a, an area of infection, which not only would mean there wasn't any bone there, would mean this would need to be cleaned out and cleared out and, and, and dealt with and disinfected before an implant could be put in. So when we did the scan and I had a look for the first time, the moment of joy was discovering that even though I thought, oh, is it, isn't it, isn't, is it, isn't it? When we did the CT scan we, and we had a look at the amount of bone, there was a way in which we could clean out the area of infection, place the implant and potentially put some sort of cover or, you know, some, some sort of, um, but a, a, heat, a customized healing abutment on it that would let us carry out the treatment in the right way. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, from my point of view, that was a really big moment because before that, I thought, we can't do it, we can't do it, can we, can we, can we, can't we? And then we could. I think in some ways you, you had you, your treatment part, you know, the treatment that you did on him was probably more complex in, to in terms of than what I did but spread over a longer period of time, mm -hmm. whereas my complexity fitted into kind of two or three really short Intense. appointments where it was like, <laughs> it has to happen now, you yeah. don't get a second chance. Yeah. And so that's probably a difference in terms of how orthodontics and implantology are. In, as, as you know as, as dental disciplines yeah but it, it's amazing what you can do these days you know as i said 10 years ago could we have collaborated so efficiently and smoothly probably not and i think 
um, being able to communicate yeah, in, no. in such and a... And having a platform such as DS exactly, Core where yeah. we're able to kind of share the photographs, share status updates on the case, exactly. that really has helped yeah. us because, you know, you're in Bexley, I'm in Clapham, <laughs> it's a long way between the two. Yeah. And that really meant that I felt that we were almost... It felt like that allowed us to feel like we're in the same practice, Absolutely. maybe on different levels, yeah. you know, not popping in every day, <laughs> but, you know, it, it really Absolutely. did feel like it brought you know, for the care of the patient, it brought all of the technology together in a way that allowed us to be able to see what the other was doing yeah. at all times. No, 100% agree. Yeah. Yeah. Looking, looking back at the journey and looking back to where we were from where Luke started to looking at that route and wondering, are we going to be able to do this? To what we've delivered, you know, which is Nina and I and her team as well, because there's some composite bonding and whitening yes. that's happened. You know, I'm really, really happy with the final result. One thing that I think I, I've talked about which is just between the time we've taken the impression and we fitted the crown, there's been a little bit of a change in the bone level around that implant, which will change over time. So that gives me a slight, uh, you know, it, it means I can't, I, I've got to just hold back a bit and say, I would like to wait to see how that looks before saying I'm 100% happy. But certainly from the way the implant and the crown look, um, the work that Steve and his team at Nexus Dental have done is phenomenal. From the way it functions, the way it feels, from what Luke's going to be able to carry on with his life, and to be able to do this in seven months of time, with that compressed time frame, with working with an orthodontist in a different practice where we've never actually met in person, and all the communication is done online and via DS Core, really, really pleased with that part of it. In terms of what, what have I learned, what would I take away? I think, you know, one of the things is you're always, you're always learning, you're always reflecting. I'm never 100% happy with any case and I think the day that I'm 100% happy will be the time to kind of think maybe about retiring. So there's yeah. obviously <laughs> little things to tweak within that. I mean, there's little things like, you know, in some ways, I wish I could change the crown behind the implant. I really wish I could change those two so they'd look really nice. I really wish that, as an example, a little bit more time, potentially with the healing, leaving with a provisional crown just to check that bone level if, again, we weren't doing this in that amount of time. And aside from that, I, I don't think there's much else. I, I don't think, I mean, th those are minor things and I'm glad they're minor things, but there's nothing big that I would look back and think, oh my God, I really wish we'd done it this way. I just realized that it's quite a unique project and quite a unique time frame and quite a unique way of collaborating. Mm -hmm. And we've delivered something that the patient is happy with we're both happy with, we know he's going to last a long time, he's going to work very well, and actually he's going to mean that he's comfortable and able to smile, so that's really the main thing to take away from it. Being involved in this project, I've learned a lot about, you know, how far digital dentistry can allow you to do joint, uh, you know, multidisciplinary um, treatment planning, but also making that communication so much more effective. I mean, like I said earlier, I feel like we've actually met in the past, but this is the first time we're actually meeting today. But um, using technology and the communication tools available now, it doesn't feel like that. You can really seamlessly plan a patient's care to the, you know, to the best of our ability these days. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on it. My thoughts are there's so much that you can take away from this as a general dentist. The first thing is, there's all this technology that's available to you and they're all tools and you can use them in whatever way you want within the limits of those tools. The second part is there's a lot more that can be done with aligners yeah. in terms of if you're able to use them to the nth degree, what's possible. The third part is there's a lot more you can do with digital implantology. You know, a case that maybe if you're not feeling that confident with looking at, you know, looking at the anatomy around the area, if you understand the, the biology, if you understand the mechanics, if you understand how your implant works and if you do the planning in the right way, you can get an implant in, you can get the teeth moved, you can get a final crown on, all while managing the patient orthodontically. And for your patients, if, they, if you're able to treat them this way, if you're able to use that planning, you'll find that it will reduce their treatment times it will probably improve the number of people who will say yes because if you can fit the implant in with the orthodontics that's going to mean that they're much happier to go ahead they're not having to have one complete treatment then the other complete treatment and the other thing is you can do it predictably so this could make it efficient for you in practice so i think there's so much that you can take from this as a general dentist because all of the things that we do although nina's a specialist and i'm my practice is limited to implants the treatments that we do some of them are you know a lot of them are achievable maybe not in the time scale that we had in this case, and maybe not the complexity we had in this scale, but simpler versions of this can certainly be done by you using the technology that you have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that is A Smile Is Born. Hey. Hey.
who are you most looking forward to showing your smile to? Everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone. Anyone who wants to look at my mouth, just come and look. <laughs>